In this video, I want to talk about some more advanced things you can do in Cinema 4D. Uh, you can create your own animations in here. I'm just going to play this through so you can see what that looks like. Um, and you can export those animations out into Arrow. You can bring in some textures here. Um, and uh, these are image-based textures, and so you can have these patterns on here or other, other, other kinds of textures. Um, so I want to talk about kind of the mechanics of doing this. Uh, I'll show you with this example file, but then I'll start with something that's uh, a little bit more simple just to show you the technique. So um, uh, this is what the file looks like, and in, in order to get this ready uh, for Arrow, where we, I animated these uh, rotations uh, or different properties here. Um, it, um, I'm, I'm, I want to just show you what this looks like and how, the level that you need to get this um, prepared for. I'm going to go into Window and go to uh, Timeline Dope Sheet to see what that looks like. I could also do a search. Shift C, go to timeline, um, and the thing I want to see is this dope sheet. Um, this shows me the keyframes uh, uh, that are in this file, and here you can see that um, there's a keyframe for basically all, like for every uh, moment that there's something happening here. Um, this is after I've optimized this file for Arrow. I've baked the keyframes, so when I first animated this, I didn't drop keyframes in every single frame, but I need to prepare this this way for uh, Adobe Arrow. Um, my file itself looks uh, looks a little bit like this. Um, the, this file that I'm working in is shapes.c4d. Uh, when I was making bringing the textures, I imported the textures and created this texture folder that has all these textures in it. And uh, then what I did is I made a separate folder um, to house the FBX file that I exported in addition to all those textures. So I copied and pasted those in. Um, and then Arrow will take a uh, zip file. So I, I took this and I right clicked it and said compress. Um, and this is what I can uh, upload into Adobe Arrow and, and that's how I can bring this into my scene. So let's start with something more simple. Um, okay, so here's a new file in Cinema 4D, and I'm going to start with some basic shapes, some 3D shapes in uh, Cinema 4D or in some 3D terminology. These are called uh, primitive shapes, um, and you can see we have a palette to work with. Uh, so I'm clicking into this corner down here to get more options, and I can pick different items. Just to keep it simple, I've I'll use a cube for right now. Um, okay, so the first thing we want to do is let's bring an image-based texture. We're going to create a material. We'll go to standard material, and we'll get into the materials. So um, this is the material editor, and we have certain properties that were our channels that we're able to put into here. Now, Arrow doesn't accept all of the uh, properties or the channels here, but um, to keep it simple, we, we can just work in color. I just want to make sure that we're in there and not some other channel here. Uh, okay, let's go to color, and what we're going to do is load in a texture from here. Load. <clears throat> so I have a, a folder that I'm creating for this uh, file, a uh, simple shape example. I brought this this image in here just to show you kind of what it looks like. And um, you you know you could have a, an image from some other program. Uh, you know, it could be somewhere else. I just brought it here so we can see it. Um, you do want to make sure that this texture is not overly large, um, and you want to kind of make sure it's kind of scaled appropriately to the surface, um, because Adobe Arrow can't take over 2K images, um, and it uh, wants you to scale the image in a one-to-one -one ratio. So even though in Cinema 4D we can actually scale and tile things, uh, we want the image to be pretty matched up to the, the final texture. So um, I'm going to say open this, and it's going to ask me, uh, do you want to create a copy at the project location? Uh, I think it's good It's good practice for you to do this so that you know all your textures are in the same folder, and if you need to uh, share your files, you have that folder all contained. Let's say yes for right now. 
And just to show you, uh, oh, you know what? I, I made one mistake uh, that I should probably correct first. Um, let me save this because it doesn't know where this, where this file is. Um, and so it can't copy it over. So let me go back into my simple shapes and I'll call this simple shape. Um, okay. So let me do this one more time. Um, I'm going to, if you ever want to get rid of this and try another one, you can clear it or you can just load a new image here. So let's go to load, load that in there. It's going to ask me, do you want to copy that path? Let's see. Um, Um, and I guess, you know, maybe it's okay that we have this, um, that we have this, uh, file already in the same folder. I, I think actually maybe that's, that's what's happening here. I don't need to make a separate texture folder. It understands the relationship here, but again, keep it contained in here because later on we're going to need to prep this file. Uh, okay. Um, let's, let's take this texture that we just created. And we can just click and drag and put it onto the surface. And that's what that looks like. Let's hit Command R to kind of get a preview of that. Again, you can um, you can rotate around. I'm holding down three and clicking and dragging to rotate. Two will let me zoom in and out. One will let me move around like this. So um, it's not perfectly tiled in this case, uh, but I think it's okay just to show you this technique. Um, okay. Uh, there, there is a way to like move these things around and offset them, the patterns. Uh, but you can see, I think it's just my fault for not making this pattern perfectly tiling. Um, I'm just going to undo that. Uh, so, uh, keep that in mind. Um, okay. We've got this set up. The next thing I wanted to show is a uh, little animation. So um, right now, our timeline is down here. And we can scrub through. We can press play. And you can see it's going through. These are frames. And we're at, I think the project settings are default at 30 frames per second. So you can see roughly how fast it's moving. Um, no, nothing is animated right now. If we want to change the range of this, um, one thing I encourage people to do is not make a super long animation. Maybe it's a looping animation or, you know, that could uh, help you out. I just want to make something smaller. So if I ever want to change what this, how long my animate, my project is, I could go in and change this to 60 frames and it kind of sh uh, shortens the, uh, the length of the project. Um, what I'm going to do is click on the object. That's how we select it. And now we need to uh, change some settings here. Now I can, I'm selecting this and then opening up attributes down here. So there's this kind of relationship of this is your object manager, and then you can get other properties and things in here, you know. But I'm I'm in attributes, and I'm starting to move these around, and you can see it's changing in space. Um, it's not animating because I haven't keyframed this or I haven't like uh, saved key moments in this to create in between frames. Uh, so what I want to do to drop a keyframe in any of these properties, maybe I'll just make it go back to zero. Um, for, for ease purposes, uh, I'll hit this button and it's going to, uh, it's going to turn red and that tells me a keyframe has been dropped. You can also see here, there's a keyframe and maybe what we'll do is, uh, we'll go forward in time and make sure, again, if you don't see the options, make sure you're clicked on the object, make sure you're in attributes and maybe you, we're thinking about looping it. So maybe we'll do 360, 180, um, or actually, I think we should probably do multiples of 360 if we really wanted to loop. So maybe it's 360, 360, 720. Let's double it. And then we have we've changed it, but we need to save the keyframe here. So we got to press the button to save it. And then you see you saw that that keyframe turned on. Uh, let's take a look at what this looks like. We'll press play. That is, uh, I don't know. That might be a little bit too much. Maybe I don't need to make this go all the way to 720. Maybe I'll just go to 360. It's kind of a lot of movement. Okay, so it's uh, yeah a big amount of animation. Uh, again, we're prepping this file for Adobe Arrow. 
let's go back into our timeline. Uh, so window timeline dope sheet. This is going to show us uh, the keyframes. Um, for reference, F curve gives you uh, these the, this graph editor of speed, and what this represents is actually there is uh, some easing already applied to this animation. Um, it means that it kind of slows down. It starts slow, speeds up, and then slows down. And you can see that reflected in there. Um, if you wanted to change the animation, you can actually like click and drag these around. It'll change the, the speed. You can see it's actually changing the speed. It's like much slower in certain areas. Um, I'm just going to undo it. And uh, one other thing that you might want to do is if you want linear, now remember in Adobe Aero, we talked about easy ease. Um, this is more of an easy ease in and out. And then linear would be of a constant speed. So this is something if you want it to look like it's just moving continuously, it's a constant speed represented by the straight line. Um, I kind of like the easing the way it is. So I'm going to just leave that. Again, this is, the, uh, this, this is letting us look at the F curve. Uh, but I want to just go into, to keep it simple, I'm going to go into uh, uh, the dope sheet. There we go. Which just shows me my keyframes here. Now we need to get this, we need to get this to look um, like uh, the previous example file with all those keyframes there. So what we'll do is we need, we've got to bake this down and baking it like, you know, just simplifies it and, and breaks it down into components, I guess. It, uh, is the analogy. Um, let's click on the object. Um, we're going to go up to functions. And then we'll go to bake objects. And let's see what happens. So what we want to do is, uh, keep, you know, zero to 60 frames, that's good. Bake, bake the expressions. We don't really have any expressions. But we do want to make sure that um, we want to, anything that's animated, we want to bake it down. So. Um, Adobe Aero lets you bake in position, scale, and rotation. So even though we don't have scale here, I think it's good for you to know that you can animate that scale. There's certain things that you can't, uh, that Adobe Aero can't quite handle right now. But if if you take position, scale, and rotation, those are I think some some simple properties that you can get a lot of mileage with. So let's hit OK, and boom, it's getting all baked down. So now we're actually in a good spot. I do want to call one thing out before I continue. I actually made one mistake. Uh, in the bake options, I actually had um, create copy selected. And what happened is there was, you can see there, my original cube and then the, a copy was created and that had the baked keyframes in. I don't need the redundancy of this. So I could have just hit create copy or uh, I could have hit bake it without the copy. And then let's just assume that we never made that copy. Uh, and so this is what I'm going to export as an FBX. We can, uh, we've got our image based texture. Um, it's animated and we got all those keyframes baked down. I'm going to save my file and then let's, um, let's export this. So export it as an FBX. Um, we can use the settings here. These should be fine. Uh, hit OK. And we can, we can put it into this folder. Or maybe we'll, again, remember I said you need to make a zipped folder of this. I'm going to maybe say simple shapes, uh, simple shape. OK, so I'll sim put this in here, simple shape FBX. Let's go back into Finder and prep this a little bit. OK, so we're back in Finder. Here's that folder. I did say that we need to make sure that any textures are that we use are included in here. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in here. Um, hopefully it's not too redundant. We'll compress this so we have a zip file. Um, and then we'll bring this into Adobe Arrow and load it from there. All right, so I want to uh, now upload the f that uh, file, the 3D file I made. Um, now. Actually, working on the desktop and the mobile app, we we have two different workflows. What I want to do now is work on getting the 3D files into my cloud document so I can use them on a mobile device. If I go into my simple shape example, I have that zip folder. Um, and this is something that I need if I want to 
use this, um, pull it into a scene that I'm creating kind of initially or exclusively on a mobile device. Uh, we'll import that in. And now we'll be able to import that into a scene on a mobile device. So here's what this wor workflow looks like. I'm on the mobile device now and I'm creating a new scene. I'm again, scanning the area and I want to add this from the creative cloud. Previously what I did was on the creative cloud browser uh, window, I uploaded that zip file and I'm going to bring this into my scene. Uh, I'm going to select it. I'll add the, the triggers here. I'm going to do a start animation. So add play animation and that animation that we baked in Cinema 4D is now accessible. We can see preview what that looks like by pressing play. We can change the speed as well. Um, we could add infinite to the play count or do other things with it. Um, I'm moving it around, taking it off the ground a little bit, and that's kind of what it looks like in this space. Uh, and here is an example of a video that I recorded. If I'm working on the desktop device, I'm going to make a new scene. And I noticed the flow is a little bit different. I'm going to say simple shape. Um, when I go to try to import that asset, that zip file that I had, uh, for some reason, Adobe Aero is thinking that it is an image sequence, probably because in the past we've, uh, we've made image sequences uh, zipping them up. Uh, so the workaround here that I've realized is actually this, uh, this FBX file that we created is actually going to give us enough information to use in the Adobe Aero app. So um, we see the textures came in. We can adjust this as necessary if we wanted to, like, let's say, scale it up a little bit. What about the animation that we had? Well, that's going to be added with the behavior. So we'll go into the behaviors trigger. We'll maybe we'll just do a start behavior. And what we'll do is say play animation. That animation is accessible here um, uh, as an animation set. So all those keyframes that we bake down, that, that is accessible here. And we can play it. And we could actually change the speed. We can make it slower, maybe, if we thought oh, it's too fast. All right, so we can edit things here. And maybe we will do an infinite. Um, and then go into preview mode. And let's see what that looks like. Let's zoom around. So here we've taken this animation uh, that we've created in Cinema 4D with the texture, and uh, hopefully you understand this process. Again, the workflows are a little bit different in the mobile app and the desktop app.